This is the Whole Care Network. Helping you tell your story one podcast at a time. Content presented in the following podcast is for information purposes only. Views and opinions expressed in this podcast are solely those of the host and guest and may not represent the views and opinions of the Whole Care Network. Always consult with your physician for any medical advice and always consult with your attorney for any legal advice. And thank you for listening to the Whole Care Network. The following podcast sometimes offers unusual solutions to usual problems. These solutions are meant for qualified agencies or individuals to put into action. And I'd be willing to bet that's not you. Also, this show uses mature language and discusses grown-up themes. Listen, folks, we don't take ourselves too seriously. Neither should you. So, let's go have a laugh. Welcome to Unscrew It Up. I'm Josh. I'm Amanda. And just for a second, I forgot the name of this podcast. (laughs) Well, you only do three. (laughs) That's right. And we offer differently twisted solutions to life's little problems. And today we're going to unscrew up pets. Or pet ownership. Uh, I mean, we can't unscrew up the animals themselves. Can't we? (laughs) So welcome to our little journey of frivolity here and hopefully we're adding a little value to your lives as well and one organization that adds value to your lives is wilson technologies oh, yes wilson technologies is a subsidiary of familiar wilson's media which is our parent company and they exist to give you yesterday's solutions for tomorrow's problems, problems. problems. <laughs> problems. is that right i don't remember it might be tomorrow's solutions for yesterday's problems or yesterday's... Is that what you said? No, I... <laughs> I don't even know what you said. I said yesterday's problems With tomorrow's solved solutions. tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow. Okay, there you go. That makes sense. One Not of, really, but... One it, of the, it's been different every single time. Doesn't matter because they're so smart and so engaged at Wilson Technologies doing the work of the people that they don't have time to mess with little words. No, you mess with the words for them. That's right. And you do an excellent job at it. Failing. I'm absolutely failing. But Wilson Technologies is working on something new this week. Oh, what is it? As you know, babies are adorable and cute. It's true. But they lack the ability to grow facial hair. (laughs) Babies do not need facial hair. That's terrifying. So I believe that we can remedy this with... Fake baby mustaches. No. Fake mustaches for babies. No, babies don't need this. I think that they do. Okay, go ahead. Now, through research and experimentation, Wilson Technologies has developed a prototype of mustaches that are both safe and stylish for babies. How is it not a choking hazard? It's safe and stylish. Okay, so so explain how safe and stylish it is. So they're made of a soft and breathable material and with very comfortable straps. Okay. For a secure fit. Okay. Not going to move. <laughs> okay. You may ask yourself, self, what are the benefits of fake mustaches for babies? I do wonder. Well, what do you think? What would be if a benefit? The baby needs to be disguised? No, that's not one of them. That's an extra <laughs> thing, though. That is perfect. What if you find yourself as a baby needing to sit on the shoulders of someone underneath a big trench coat? <laughs> that's right. Then you'll already have the mustache. <laughs> that's not even one of the, the things. First of all, they provide an added level of sophistication and charm. There you go. Okay. Imagine a baby sporting a thick and luscious handlebar (laughs) mustache. It'll turn heads. They'll say, that baby, he's a jet-setting baby. That's right. Or she. He's a distinguished gentleman. Okay. Another thing, uh, clearly, they will provide a boost to the baby's (laughs) self-esteem. Does your facial hair boost your self-esteem? It does. Why okay. do you think I grow it? I don't know. Also, I, I have less of a chin these days, <laughs> right. which is another problem for babies. Weak chins. Babies do have weak chins. 
Our baby started out with a weak chin. Our baby had no lower chin. (laughs) So, of course, you're saying mustaches don't address the chin. We would have a goatee and a beard model as well as we go along. But it would give them the appearance of an accomplished adult and boost their self-esteem. Give them more self-confidence. Also, they can provide an extra layer of warmth during those cold winter months. On just a very specific part of their face. You got to start somewhere. And it's a part of the face that doesn't get addressed. Sure, we have jackets and coats. What happens with the upper lip? Lastly, fake mustaches are a wonderful way to bond with your baby. Imagine a father and son or (laughs) father and whatever, doesn't matter, having matching mustaches. I mean, they make matching outfits for moms and daughters. So yes, matching face. And we're not trying to be gender normative here. It's just one of those things that the child marketed to the world. The child that wishes to have a mustache and the adult that is their adult that wishes to also have a matching mustache wasn't possible before, except for maybe permanent marker. Possible now. Well, I hate to break it to you, but this kind of does exist. What? Yeah. Go ahead. They have pacifiers with mustaches. Oh, yeah, no, but you can't always have a pacifier in. Oh, look, you got really upset for a second. That's not practical because what if, again, if the baby's trying to appear sophisticated, (laughs) the pacifier is going to give that one away. (laughs) Okay. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fake mustaches for babies coming soon from Wilson Technologies. Because you know what? We are also here. For the babies. For the babies. Are your plants feeling a little too exposed? Do they need a fashion accessory that's both practical and stylish? Introducing Hats for Plants. That's right, with Hats for Plants, you can finally give your little green friends the accessory they deserve. Our hats come in all shapes and sizes, from cute little beanies for your succulents, to big floppy sun hats for your ferns, to cowboy hats for the cactus on the go. But these just aren't any hats. Our patented design features a built-in irrigation system so your plants can stay hydrated while still looking fabulous. Plus, our hats are made with breathable materials that won't suffocate your plants like those other plant hats on the market. So why settle for boring hatless plants when you can give them the gift of fashion? Try Hats for Plants today and watch your garden transform into a runway. And if you order now, we'll throw in a free pair of sunglasses for your cacti. Because even prickly plants need protection from the sun. Hats for plants. Get yours now. Ladies and gentlemen, the Wilsons will now... Unscrew it up. Pets! We have a pet. We do have a pet. In fact, he is here in the room. He's very exhausted. He just got back from his spa appointment, getting his nails done and his bath and his teeth cleaned. There are many problems that people who have furry companions have dealt with for many years. And not just furry, also scaly. Yeah, it's true. Fishy, fishy and, and reptiles lizards and, and yep. turtles and all of the things. I don't have any solutions for them because I haven't done the market research on that. I don't own those things. I do. Good. You speak to that. I'm speaking specifically to this dog. If we have discovered anything on this podcast is that I am purely out for my own benefit. All of my solutions address my exact problems. You think more globally for the people, which is great. I'm thinking very granularly for myself. I have no idea how I'm going to edit that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but what we're going to do is we're going to present these different ideas. We're going to narrow them down to five, and we're going to send it to an individual or organization to take our ideas and give them feet or wings or paws or whatever. And so this week, our five suggestions are going to go to the Institute of Gremlins 2 Studies. It's an organization dedicated to analyzing the 1990 film <laughs> Gremlins 2 and its cultural impact. Well, but... 
Maybe the ASPCA might have been a better choice. They're too busy. Okay. These folks ain't got <laughs> sh- ain't got anything to do. They probably really don't. How long can you analyze that movie? All right, Amanda, how many solutions do you have? I have three. All right, I too have three. Would you like to go first? Sure. The problem is the dog needing to go out. Yes, big problem. Okay. The dog needs to go out. We really should walk the dog, but we don't get up early enough in the morning to walk the dog before we're all rushing around to get ready for school and work and or it's cold and or it's dark, depending on the time of the year. So we let the dog in the backyard because we have a fenced in yard, except that our yard is tiny. And so it's like little landmines. Also, the dog likes to eat things in the backyard that cause him to be sick. I need some sort of smart solution to letting the dog out into the backyard and then considering the things that have happened in the backyard and then letting the dog back in the backyard. I know that you say dog doors, they exist. Dog doors, they exist. Here's the problem with dog doors. Things that go out can also come in. So you can look it up. Dog doors, snakes come into the house. Raccoons come into the house. Rodents come into the house. This is not a good solution for me. I need, you know those when we go to the butterfly museum, there's like that airlock in the middle. Yes. So you go in the one door and you stand and then you go out the other door to make sure that the butterflies are not coming back in the house. So this is what I need, a two-step door for the dog going into the yard. Why are you making this face? I'm picturing this. I'm trying to imagine this. So, And another problem with our dog is he will go to the door, but that's the only time he doesn't bark. He barks all the other times, but we just have to catch him standing at the door or he turns around and goes on the floor right there. So this would be like you're walking into the grocery store. It's an automatic door. The dog walks up to it. It opens. He walks into the little antechamber. It shuts behind him and then it opens and he goes into the yard. So you basically want an airlock for the dog. Yes. So he's in the yard. He does his things. He comes back to get in. One, it blows a lot of uh, air on him, like at the butterfly museum to make sure the butterflies are off of us and we're not carrying them through because he always stinks when he comes back inside. It does not matter how long or short he is outside. He smells when he comes back inside. Two, it will analyze any kind of stuff he has around his mouth to see if he has eaten something in the backyard if he has it will not let him in he will stay there until he throws up it will clean itself it'll hose itself down like a chemical shower in the chemistry lab at school and clean him too and then it will let him back in so i need a an airlock smart solution for the dog to go outside by himself but uh, my problems are the dog going inside because we don't catch him Things coming inside from the door it's not supposed to. Bugs, snakes, things. And also the dog eating junk in the backyard and throwing up. So there, I've solved three problems with my smart airlock door system. What I'm hearing here is that you want an airlock, you want a a hazmat situation, Mm -hmm. and you want a car wash. Yes. All in one. Yes. Okay. (laughs) You want mustaches for babies. I'm not here to judge you, nor should you be judging me. Go ahead. What's uh, your problem? How are you solving it? All right. <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't think I have anything that's as exhaustive as that, but I'm going to go ahead anyway. My problem is you can't hug a fish. Okay. I mean, you can, but I don't think it's helpful for the fish. You, you can't. No, realistically speaking, you can't hug a fish. You're not supposed to touch certain turtles because they are coated with salmonella and you will, you will not survive the encounter or you'll get really sick. There's lizards that you really shouldn't touch. Snakes. You sh- I mean, people cuddle snakes, not so much into it. That's my problem. Pets that you can't pet. I mean, it's in the name. If you have a pet, you should be able to pet the pet, right? Yes, you should be able to pet the pet. This sounds like the beginning of the last Dr. Seuss poem before he <laughs> passed on. Why can't you pet the pet? I have a solution. Making uncuddly pets cuddly. First, you send a picture of your pet to a company that's very similar to Build-A-Bear. Okay. They construct a plush version of your pet. This exists. Okay, go ahead. Right, but if you get that plush version, you're not actually hugging your pet. You're hugging the the stuffy, right? Right. So in, let's say we have a fish. In the middle of the stuffed fish, a little fish tank. Okay. The fish goes in there, so you can actually now then sleep with your fish. <laughs> you can hug your fish. 
You can love it. You can call it George. Same with your lizard, your snake, your turtle. Plush replica of pets with the pets inside, like they're in a suit. And then all of a sudden, like it's going to open up whole new worlds. You can take your fish with you on a trip. (laughs) How wonderful that you can have emotional support fish. I actually think this is a really good idea. Why do you always sound so (laughs) damn surprised? (laughs) Making uncuddly pets cuddly. (laughs) All right. I like it. All right. Go ahead. All right. My next problem is actually cleaning up after the dog when I do take the dog for a walk. So we go out. We're in the neighborhood. We have the dog waste stations around the neighborhood. I hate with my whole heart picking it up because even though I stick my hand yeah. in the bag it's warm it's warm it's so warm it's so and I know there's a layer bit of plastic plastic between me and it I still ooh, it's so gross I'm not gonna leave it because I get annoyed when other people leave it and our kids run around and we want people we want to have a clean neighborhood so I am employing the grocery pod from last week's episode to have a dog walking pod and it'll walk with me. I will still get the exercise. Maybe I, it could go out with the dog. Should it be raining or something? And we just clip the dog to it and it goes out, but it also has the retractable arm, retractable, retractable arms that will do the picking up of the stuff and throwing it away for you. So you don't have to, so you can still have a lovely walk, enjoy being outside with your dog, but then you have the little thing floating next to you that will clean up for it. So if you haven't listened to last week's episode, go listen to last week's episode. But one of the things was a floating pod, much like what Baby Yoda is in in The Mandalorian, not a sponsor. So you want a a little pod or drone Mm -hmm. that will take care of the poop problem. Yes. Okay. All right. That might already exist. It it might exist. See, stuff like this excites me when we come up with it because that can happen. Mm Mm-hmm. Much like the poop swing. You're saying my airlock cannot happen? I, I'm not saying that. Okay. I don't have to say that. I mean, that kind of speaks for itself. The cost of that thing. All right, next. <laughs> my next problem is shedding. Yeah, oh, so bad. This was an easy one to fix, okay. shedding. And we could actually do it if we had a little elbow grease that we were willing to put into this project. Okay. Like brushing the dog? No, because even that, like you brush the dog and then you're done and stuff still falls out. Yeah. I mean, it's, brushing the dog gets a lot of it out mm-hmm. and you do see a difference. But then, you know, what will that last like a day? Yeah, you and have then, to do it every day. So that's not my favorite. Full body onesie made of lint rollers. <laughs> okay. We already have the technology. So you, you have this full body onesie. Uh, when a certain amount of time goes by... <laughs> You just you just gently peel it off, um, and then you put on another onesie. Done, done. Catches all the hair. Full body onesie made of lint rollers. Solved. Next. So I have lint rolled the dog before. <laughs> okay. So, but still, that you've only gone halfway. Not in a way that hurt him, but I've seen all these TikToks and Instagram reels of people vacuuming their dogs. Then dogs will just lay there and take the vacuuming, and they look like they love it. Now this thing hates the vacuum even when it's off. It, he's very angry about it, so he would never let us vacuum him. So I have lint rolled him when I've been frustrated. All right. All so of good. The shedding. So yeah. So we just take it one step further. Yep. Just make sure that you don't get his eyelashes. Yeah. All right. Good. All right. Or his little winky winky. All right, go. All right. My last one is, you know, people take their pets to doggy daycare or pet daycare or have people come and babysit the animals if they're going back to work. When I was home over quarantine working, the dog got very used to it. And then we all went back and it was hard for him. I'm not paying for doggy daycare. I'm not paying to have somebody come in. My solution for this is a doggy daycare television channel that I can leave on for him. So some people I've seen clips lately of dogs watching like bear in the big blue house or blues clues and the dog seeming into it. So leaving something on for him during the day, but that's actually some sort of like doggy training channel. So it will. So Caesar Milan, why don't we just put Caesar Milan? He's problematic. He's problematic. Oh, Sorry, I did not know that. Yeah, cut that out. Um, no, I'm not going to cut it out, but I don't know what the problem with Caesar well, Milan is. Well, we were having this conversation the other day. There's thought, anyway, I mean, at work. Doesn't matter. So doesn't doesn't matter. matter. No, but it would be kind of like a hypnosis tape. Oh, for but, dogs? For dogs. So it would just be like running all of the time, like a, a meditative, you will not eat things when you go outside into the backyard. 
You will not bark at the people just living their lives outside. Intruders who try to come in your home, those are the ones you bark at. The robot vacuum is your friend, and it will just run this stuff over and over (laughs) all day long so that we train the dog whilst we are at work. And you're certain that the dog understands enough English to be able to benefit from this? Peanut butter. I mean, he understands certain words. I know, but you just said peanut butter to him, and I just said it. Nothing. He's just like he's past Nothing. So, okay, well, that might get the axe. All right, fine. But I do need the dog to be trained, and I do have to go to work. So I'm other than taking him to a place that trains him, I need some sort of uh, in-home training system. My last solution may address some of the problems that you put forth there. One of the big problems with dogs is they get bored. And when they yes. get bored, they get destructive. Yes. So if we can eliminate that, I think they will address your problem, right? Okay, yeah. So address my problem. Doggy Employment Agency. <laughs> I feel like, isn't this something that we saw in The Secret Life of Pets or something? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think in this way. But if so, then wonderful. But I don't think that it's out there. Now, the ancillary benefit to this is you're not paying someone to take care of your dog. Your dog's going out and earning its (laughs) keep, and it's bringing a salary back. All right. There are so many dogs that are suited for so many different jobs. Not only dogs. I'm sure that other pets as well can be suited for different things. Yes. Cats and snakes and lizards. They all have their particular talents or things, (laughs) things that their physicality allows them to do. Okay. Let's take our dog as an example. I'm not sure what skill set he has that makes him employable. Digging holes for the utility company. Okay. Digging holes for some owners of dogs is a real problem. It's a difficulty. It's a thing that they're they're trying to curb their dogs from doing. This way, it could actually benefit them. And the reality is that the dog wants to dig. It's like genetic. Right. Especially with terriers. Right. Which is what we have. Another thing, a motion sensor alarm. Yes, they are very intuitive. Well, the, also, this one barks at anything that moves. Yes. And so oh, pa- oh, I thought you said emotion sensor. No, a <laughs> motion sensor, sensor yes. alarm. That makes so much how more would, sense. How would the dog convey, oh, this one is sad? <laughs> no. Don't. Because he cuddles. He comes up and cuddles when people are sad. No, a motion sensor alarm. Okay. This one it. barks at anything that moves. Imagine him somewhere where there needs to not be anything moving. Like, and like, a, like a bank at night or whatever. <laughs> Park him there. Perfect. What else? Food garbage disposal. Yes. I mean, as long as it's edible food, imagine him in a restaurant or a a bunch of hymns, right? You would not have a problem. You wouldn't need to vacuum. You wouldn't need to vacuum. Yes, under the tables. Just send the the dogs out. I feel like this is what they did in ancient times, (laughs) like in the castles. And then they would would wipe their hands on the dogs. That's where Release the Hounds comes from. But then even in the kitchen, it, no food waste because the dog's being fed. Yes. So, in other words, the dog's bringing home money from his job and we don't have to feed him. Oh my gosh, I really want this to happen. What else? Weed killer. Oh, no, but see, then he throws it up. Oh, you mean No, 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 no. go it. pee on it. it. Yeah. Weed killer and lawn fertilizer. These things, these dogs are made for yard work. Yes. It's just that this one doesn't choose to do it. <laughs> he needs a proper foreman. That's our problem. Okay. I, don't, I don't know how to... <laughs> Teach the dog to do yard work. Not my problem. How about this? Toupee hair supplier. (laughs) Yeah, he's got enough. I was Furbying him today. I don't think it's called Furby. What's what I call it Furby. What's it called? The Furminator. I was Furminating him today, and there's enough to make at least a wig for the babies to go with the babies. He's got cool white hair. hair. I think that that this this white hair would would be uh, something that people want. And he's also got brown. Yes. Which I would like. So I would probably want the first toupee as long as we wash the hair. Yes. So those are just some of the jobs for a dog. Cats have their different talents. They've got those sharp claws that I'm sure could be helpful for cutting things up. Snakes send them down drains. I mean, we already call it a snake, right? (laughs) So get a snake and do that. (laughs) So those are my solutions. And you have given your solutions. Just to recap, you want an airlock for your pet. I do. You want a a dog walking drone, basically. And then the third one was was the hypnosis television channel, which you said would go away. Hypnosis TV. I'm I'm just not certain about that one. That's all. We can talk about it. Mine, pets that are huggable. I think this is a great idea. Full body onesie made of lint roller. I've already halfway tested that. Doggy employment agency. Yep. 
All right, so which one are we getting rid of? I mean, we're going to get rid of the television channel because I don't know that the science is there on hypnosis, audio hypnosis working for dogs. All right, so we've got our five. Doggy drone, airlock, slash hazmat, slash washing uh, area for dogs, um, doggy employment agency, doggy onesie, and making fish pettable. Huggable. Huggable. All right, well, I consider this problem... Unscrewed. 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 All right, Amanda, now it's time to answer a listener question. This one is easy, to the point, and relatable to everyone. So let's help these people out. Dear Josh and Amanda, I always have one sock go missing in the wash. Please help. I can't help you because this happens to us. So maybe Josh has an answer because I've started not even matching Josh's socks anymore. I just throw them all into his bin of socks and then he gets to choose his own adventure. Should they match? Should they not? Doesn't matter. Choose your own sock adventure. I need to know why this is happening. Why is this a thing that happens? I don't feel like enough research has gone into it. So how about a tiny camera in the washing machine so we can see what happens? Okay. What if what if the other clothes are are picking eating it? Or eating it and or picking on it? Where do they go? It makes no sense. I'm pretty sure it's like behind the washer, under the washer, under the dryer, slips down like between the two. Well, how about this then? So you know how they have those little those little tracking discs that you can put on those little air tags for yeah. Apple. We need it's to have the well, no, uh, Apple has some. Oh, do they? AirTags. We need, not a sponsor, by the way. Apple, if you'd like to sponsor us, we're happy to sponsor you. No, we're happy to have you sponsor us. That's what I said. So these little tracking devices that are built into socks, if there's any piece of clothing that deserves tracking devices, it's going to be socks. True. How about this? How about a, a team of people that their job is to recover socks, kind of like... Like, like CSI. Seals? Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. They are <laughs> like called seals, in. The SEAL team for socks. So you're calling SEAL team socks? Yes. <laughs> Instead of SEAL team socks. See what you did there? How about a separate uh, place in the washing machine for just your socks? That's actually a good idea. So they make, they make um, lingerie bags, so like mesh bags that you put like your bra and your underwear in there and drawstring it and put it in the washing machine so that you don't lose it or it doesn't get messed up with other things. So we need something similar to that for socks. Yes, I agree. Kind of keeping the socks separate like you would keep animals separate in the zoo. Because again, if there's a situation of some some cannibalism going on, we keep them separate. How about this? It's a it's a job for our dog. Train the dog to sniff out the missing socks. The dog does find socks, but then he chews them. Okay, well we'd have to train that out of them. But there's another solution. And then lastly if you can't beat them, join them. Get all therapeutic about it. Mm-hmm. Design socks that are printed with missing sock or single sock slogans on them mm-hmm. so that you can just embrace the fact that this is a part of my life. I've moved to acceptance. This is my single sock. And it's okay. Everything's going to be all right. So do you wear just one sock that day or do you wear another single sock? Well, maybe you have two single socks. So there was this store when the 16-year-old was little called Little Mismatch. And I think it was a California store, but they had it at the Disney Springs area here. And they sold socks in sets of three. You mean in case you lost one? I, because they it was Little Mismatch. So they were like kind of thematic, but none of, they didn't match each other. But right. So you, would, you could mix and match different sets within the three. So basically what they've done is brilliantly, they've taken my sock drawer and, <laughs> right. and slapped a brand on it yep. and they freaking, like, did you buy some? Yeah. Oh my God. Again, this is why, uh, why aren't I rich? <laughs> my ideas come too late. All right. So hopefully that helps all of you out there who are missing some socks. Train your dog. That's what I say. Good luck. Amanda, I don't think there's anything else we can unscrew up today. What do you think? 
How do you, how do you think uh, we did today with our solutions? I think that we did well. I want to implement them immediately in real time. I don't know that that's going to happen. So I'll have to just be patient until you get me my drone. Maybe for my birthday. My birthday's next month. Can you get me the dog walking drone? My birthday is on Monday. Uh, that's apropos of nothing, by the way. Just, just my birthday is on Monday. That your birthday is Monday. <laughs> All right, I'll see what I can do about installing a a hazmat portal in our in our house. <laughs> but, but I can use it for the child. I was gonna too. say it's it's gonna be bigger because of the child. We are a part of the Whole Care Network. It's a network dedicated to providing resources and an outlet to tell your story to people who help people. And we are so happy to be a part of the work of that network. Check them out. WholeCareNetwork.com. All right, folks, until next week, whatever you do, don't screw it up. Bye. Mr. President, it's time to power down tonight. That's a bunch of hard This is the Whole Care Network. Helping you tell your story one podcast at a time.